Before we go to work, come on, man. We got work to do. It's time to get serious. It ain't no time for me to be in here with my shirt off showing my tattoos. Don't make me go back to the streets. I just got out them streets, man. Come on. I'm trying to get on the path of righteousness and, you know, uplift the community. You feel me? I'm trying to be about my business like these brothers right here. They got all kind of exotic fragrances. <laughs> Multiple fragrances, they in here, they about to bring back S curls. <laughs> you play too much, J-O-N. But it's, it's seriously time for me to let the people know that the black market is back over. <laughs> now on this one, I'm gonna do this different because the name of this company is already my favorite. <laughs> so I'm gonna let them say it because I don't want them to think I'm playing. Mm -hmm. All right, so look, this is what y'all gotta do. Y'all gotta look at the camera. Introduce yourselves and tell them about this company, because... Yep, you? Yeah, my name is Anytime Bariola, co-founder and creative director of Flourish, the largest platform to shop and discover black-owned brands. Steve Canal, CEO and co-founder of Flourish, and this is definitely a spot to scale and discover black-owned brands. Now, what is Flourish? Flourish is the spot, bro. You know, when you with the woman, you find that G-spot. That's what Whoa, Flourish is. Whoa, that's what this is? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead is of- Is this a G-spot company? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we might got a product like that. Cause the point is, yeah, shout out, holla this candy coated. I think the point is to be able from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to sleep at night, have a touch point and experience black owned brands. So whether it's your shampoo, your toothpaste, your toothbrush, your, your beard oil, your clothes, the pancake mix, the, Per, I mean, the uh, fragrances, cards, the cookies, we, we the tabletop, everything got to be black owned. Imagine that, because at the end of the day, what that means is if you have one home, right, and the, pr the products in the home are all black owned, what does that mean for the founders? The Imagine property value about to go down. Not <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You know they did that yeah. appraisal shit. But like. you imagine how that's supporting the black community, yeah. right, and the economy, right? Allowing us to flourish. Allowing us to flourish. I see how you think. Yeah. I like where this we, is going. We, so how did all this come about, man? We wanted to create a platform to eliminate the search, right? You know, when you find a black-owned such and such or a black-owned such and such, you go and flourish, everything's there. From vegan lip gloss, to flat out of heels, you know, like you said, pancake mix, lip balm, you can find everything in that, that location. But in addition to that, we created the opportunity to story tell. So mm -hmm. brands, we create content and match them with influencers. And we also activate events, right? So it allows the brands an opportunity to get discovered. We just did a partnership with TD Jakes and launched Good Soil, where we were able to bring down 23 black owned brands to get exposure in front of 2,000 people who attended the event, right? We did South by Southwest, where, you know, they were, we, what, we brought down about 15 brands. About 15 brands. We got about five of them to come on stage and they're able to talk about themselves and their journey and their brand, you know what I'm saying, in front of 25, you know, thousand people that are coming in and out throughout the weekend. So it's right. an opportunity for exposure, but you know, for any time in us, it's in our DNA. You know what I'm saying? Being able to support black owned brands and be able to support our people, you know, it was up to us to make this decision to, to push this forward and we, we accepted that challenge. You know Same reason why you do it. You know what I'm saying? Like the, that, that feeling you get, man, like we sat here and watched, you know, like you get to put these people on a platform. It's not just a, a brand or a founder, these are people, man. Right. This is our people, you know what right. I'm saying? And you're able to legitimately change their lives. You know, like one of our brand partners got a $100,000 uh, grant at Good Soil event we just did. Right. Um, we're putting people in position, like overnight their lives are changing. Another, another brand, we had them design the merchandise right. for Good Soil, right? So we changed their lives overnight. And right. that's that's literally the, there's, the, there's this, this this gap between this wall that our brands hit as they're trying to scale. Like you're gonna hit a wall. You might make a million, you might make a hundred thousand, you might make five thousand, but eventually you're gonna be saying, well, how do I get into retail? How do I do this? I don't have the resources of the network or the relationships to get 
this part of the business right. done that's gonna take me to that next level and make me really compete. Just like so you said, and you, that's exactly why I do this. Yeah, it's like, right. to have a platform and to not do something like that, it'd just be crazy, because people need to know that we, our people are out here doing different things. They got the clothing brand, they got the, the food, the snacks, the desserts, the colognes. We, they right. need to see us in all our greatness. So that's yeah. exactly what the black market was created for. Exactly. Shout out to the exactly. black market. How did y'all link up on the business, though, man? man. Oh, man, you want me to tell who you want to get the story? <laughs> Go ahead. And we got two different perspectives. So I went to FAMU and... Um, shout out to FAMU. Shout out to FAMU. We're at the, uh, the Classic, the Atlantic Classic. And, um, I think out of all the people who have been on here, FAMU has sent Oh, FAMU's heavy, yeah, man. Nice yeah, stuff. like the more, the more people like and we Clay, have on Clay, here. And Clay, I went to, we came in together yeah. in FAMU in fall, in fall 2000. Word. So um, I was at this event at, this, at the Dome and Georgia he was Dome. at the Georgia Dome, and he was like in corporate. So I snuck up in the suite. Me and my homie snuck up in the suite. He was the only black dude in the suite, a bunch of all these white folks. And I was like, man, I hope this dude don't call us out. And he just let us kind of kick it there. He, I don't know, I don't think you knew us, but I was like, and I was watching him handle business. And at the time, I was just, you know, I was a young kid doing some wild stuff. But eventually, I started just to see him in different spaces. And I ended up writing three bestsellers, three books before I was doing this. Yeah. And we connected um, when he was at another company. He was working at a corporate company. And uh, he was doing a tour with Damon John and really pouring black dollar, I mean, pouring money into the black community via the corporate dollars through pitch competitions and stuff. So I kind of saw him moving and grooving like that. And I, I reached out to him to do, like, to get involved. And he's like, I'll holler at you when you're ready. And I thought he was kind of just, you know, kind of playing me left, but he actually hollered at me when I was ready. Not when he was ready, but when I was ready. When I was in a position to where it made sense for the relationship to get extended further. So um, we ended up going on tour together. He wrote a book, a bestseller, The Mind of a Winner. And um, in 2017, I think it was, we took, we combined a tour, a book tour I was going on. Yeah. Exhibit Great Tour. And uh, toured domestically, sold out, toured globally, Australia, Australia and just sold out everywhere. Canada. And um, and then did different ventures with the homie Kenny Burns. Um, then went on different tours together as well and kind of just built our relationship. And I learned like how he does business, the pace at which he does business. I saw y'all here bouncing ideas, right? right. Imagine the <laughs> ideas actually going into execution. Yeah. And then you're looking, it's like a moving product. So. I saw how quickly he moved and saw he was almost like this missing piece, you know, to my creative mind where he could actually execute and teach me a lot of things. So he's like this mentor turned business partner. Right. And um, we've been rocking since. We had this idea in 2020 with Flourish and, you know, it, it didn't exist. It was a bunch of lists. If you wanted to find a black brand, I either had to ask you what you're wearing, go on IG and search or look at a long directory, directory of brands. Right. So we try to make a seamless, you know, experience where people could just go to one place casually and find all the do dope black brands they like and support us. Right, and you know, being on this journey has been phenomenal because it's opened the eyes up to corporate partners as well, right? Because we filter the brands. We have over 3,000 brands that are trying to get onto the platform and we're educating them on what they need to do to get onto the platform. Some of them might need better photography, photo shots. So we have photographers we sync them with. You know, some of them need finance, so we have financiers who work with them. You know, some of them need better product description or, or copy, or they just need that extra push, right, of, of direction and guidance. So that's what you find at Flourish. It's not just the e-com mm -hmm. platform. You find a place where you're getting put on in a myriad of ways, right? From event execution to being getting, getting distribution into retail. We just launched the Shade Room Shop. We hey. just launched Good Soil with TD Jakes. We have Flourish. So you know how you think of a Walmart, Target, and all these different big box distribution outlets? Yeah. We're doing that virtually as well. Because when you think about the Shade Room, they got 40 million in their audience. I know. Right, so when we curate a platform, you're actually on their space and they're posting about you every day. We've done over $7 million worth of posts on the shade room for the brands to be able to get that exposure. They're all getting a million views per post. Think about what that does to their family, what that does to them and the mm -hmm. legacy they're building by building this community. And they all work together, you know, thinking about, you know, 3PLs, distribution. You know, thinking about manufacturers, where can I get a better cost in t-shirt or a mm -hmm. hoodie? 
you know. So this community, we work together in this family. You know, yeah. we have over 250 brands on the platform. That's hard. Yeah, like gatekeeping stuff, all that like that's that expired with 2020, man. Like we're on a different wave. I think culturally, we're you know we're collectively finally contributing. It's like cooperation and less competition. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're finally on one accord, and it's, it's lasted long enough. It's year three. So I know a lot of people were afraid, like, when is this moment going to end? Nah. We here. It's here. Uh, nah, we, we're literally right here on the, right on this couch. It's nah, here. Bro, tell me about some of this good smell. Oh, shit, man, you know? yo. <laughs> shout out to Terrence Pratt with Memoir Fragrances. He's got an incredible story and an amazing brand. Um, he collects, you know, fragrances, and he's been collecting for years. His, his collection, his entire attic dedicated to just wall-to-wall, -wall, bigger than a department store. Word. So his, his knowledge on it is crazy, and he had a passion for it. And one time, you know, I was like, yo, what are you wearing, bro? He said, my own stuff. I said, you gotta be kidding me. So I said, do you sell it? He said, no, I don't have any intention to. I just do it for myself, my wife, you know what I'm saying? Like, I said, no, you got, there's no way you can't bottle this up. So down the line from, you know, from different conversations we had, he, he came out with a product. To, tell me how this smells, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll let oh, you yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. This the one? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of them ones. Check out Street in Bronzeville real quick. Yeah, my dog said he want one of them. Oh, we got we got you. Yeah, got you. he already, already called. We got you. Yeah, we he got already you. called up. I, I man, that shit smells amazing. Yeah. You gonna keep doing that. Yeah, it smell like money. <laughs> smell like money. <laughs> smell like money. You know, I need everything. <laughs> we got you. Man, yeah, every, we got what, one of these cards. Everything on here is black owned. Yeah, we love. Saying. We got Kindred paper, which makes cards, black owned. Got you a set for Mother's Day. Come yeah. on, man. So it's got Jai Lau, which is hung up. Got you your member's jacket. Come on, man. This mine. That's yeah, that's you. Y'all give me my shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. You ain't got to take it as yours, man. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> that's all I do. You know, we try, we try to bring. Black owned. Yeah. Everything black like, on. We try yeah. to make sure we bring the culture and, to your point, the high quality that is being produced by these brands, right? Oh, because yeah, the yeah. stigma to black owned brands is customer service is poor, you know, quality is poor, such and such, such and such. But with this, with Flourish, you're going to find high quality brands that are there, that are ready. Now, where can they, where can they go and, and catch up? Where they need to go to, to be a part of this movement? Definitely. How can they get their products from? Got to follow the F. Yeah, you know what I'm follow the F with us, man. Um, flourish, flourish.com. You know, you go to Flourish, you can apply as a brand right on the website. It takes like 20 seconds to apply as a brand. Got um, you say what? Got an app. We're building, we're building an app. We're building an app. Yeah, proof of concept. Yes, sir. Uh, proof of concept. Yes, sir. Yeah, you go on flourish.com with the Y. Um, you'll be able to apply as a brand. We go through the process, we Zoom everybody, so we have face-to-face -face conversations and make sure you're prepared for the platform. Once you're on the platform, sync through our technology in the back end, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes. You're on the site, ready to roll. And then based on you know, your brand, if you're ready for it, because some brands, you know, taking a step back when he was talking about retail um, and category leaders, within this space, you have to understand that just because you have a dope brand doesn't mean you're ready you know, for, for the action when it comes to the distribution. And you love to tell people they ain't ready, no. <laughs> you I didn't say you, you ain't ready, so, man. You, know what <laughs> you might not be ready, <laughs> but when, you know, uh, a big box retailer says, I need 50,000 pieces next, you know, next month, you got to be able to deliver. Yeah, if you yeah. don't, you're dead to them, right? So we want to make sure we put you in that position for success. Yeah. So if you come through our platform, you're on Flourish, and you're ready for a TSR, the Shade Room Shop, right you can get distribution through the shade room that's a whole other ball game right when it comes to the awareness and the visibility of the brands yeah so it's our job to be able to talk to the brands and understand who's prepared for that moment and who we need to coach to be prepared for that moment but regardless you're going to have that opportunity yeah that's what's up man now if you hit him and he tell you you ain't ready <laughs> don't get in your feelings you just not ready <laughs> He even told his partner, hit me when you ready. Yeah. So. That's a safe you know, piece of like, advice, though. But for, but for me, right, I purposely went to corporate to learn how to run a billion dollar business. Yeah. Right? I coined the term corporatepreneur. I was in corporate, but I was still an entrepreneur. Right? So I learned what it took to push a machine. Right. You know, and then when going on tour with Damon John from Shark Tank Creator of FUBU for five years and supporting and seeing what it took for businesses to scale and succeed, 
we took all that insight and poured it into what we're doing as well. You know what I'm saying? So this isn't something we just made up out of the sky. You know what I'm saying? We know what it takes to be in retail. We know what it takes to scale your business. We know what it takes from a social perspective, the content to create. So we put you into that cycle in that community and from there just do the work. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, what's your social media? We're going to make sure we promote, promote, promote. How can my audience get in touch with you one more time? IG, we flourish, everything across the board, we flourish with the Y, F-L-O-U-R-Y-S-H. Show me your shirt, man. Right, flourish. <laughs> and personal, Burial-esque, B-E-R-E-O-L-A-S-Q-U-E. And Steve Canal, S-T-E-V-E-C-A-N-A-L. Holla at us. Yeah, we appreciate How can they get your books, man? Oh man, it's uh, all of them. Are will you didn't be, even tell them about the book. I didn't. All of them will be on Flourish, by yeah. the way. But Amazon, all, wherever books are sold, honestly. Uh, Burial esque is the first book, the contemporary gentleman and etiquette book for the urban sophisticate. Second book is gentlewoman etiquette from a from a gentleman etiquette for a lady from a gentleman. Third book is the gray, a relationship etiquette study. So it's all you about love that etiquette, don't you? I mean, etiquette <laughs> is just a way to maneuver relationships. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a way that the tools that you use to maneuver relationships. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I think a lot of people get it misconstrued and they think it's a bow tie and a suit and yes, sir. And it, it's not. It's not who you are. It's not like what you do, what you put on. It's who you are. It's, it's the tools that you use to navigate who you are and maintain your identity. And the book I released called The Mind of a Winner is also available, and it's available on Audible as well. Um, got Damon John in there, Barbara Corcoran, got Two Chains in there as well. That's Kenny available Smith lineup. Inside the NBA on TNT. All in the book, sharing their insights of how they not only attained success, but sustained it over time. You know what I'm saying? And all that's in there for you. Well, look, man, I appreciate y'all stopping through here. This y'all first time coming. Like, yeah, don't let time. it be the last. Absolutely not. This might have to be quarterly or every so often. Quarterly the way update. that y'all moving. You just want some more gifts, huh? Some different brands. <laughs> hey, we got you, by the way. We'll yes. Come, we'll, come for yes. The whole, we'll, we'll come for the whole team. We'll bring our brands, our Atlanta brands, and just have them just lay stuff out, man. You know yeah. the best part about y'all, bro? I ain't even had to tell y'all my side, man. Y'all always <laughs> welcome over here on the black market, bro. <laughs> yeah. The black market is open. Yes, sir. And that's how we live. And let's get a photo. Thank you for the record book. I appreciate Absolutely. you, man.